Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have, re have received from God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Would you please stand? The processional today will be found in the blue hymnal on page 779, which is on eagle's wings. Thank you. Shine. 
shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of my hand. For to the angels God's given a command to guard you in all of your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. sun and hold you in the palm of my hand. You may be seated. Well, I want to, I usually say warmly welcome you, but since you're already warm, I'll just welcome you um, to the service today. Uh, what an honor to be here leading the service. What an honor and a pleasure to do this for the Ellingson family and for Raymond. Uh, we're here today to celebrate Raymond's life, uh, a good life it was, 92 years. I'll begin with this prayer. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Raymond. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid, so we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On August 14th, 2024, Raymond Ray Ellingson passed away at the age of 92 at the Manor St. Joseph in Edgeley. Ray was born on December 18th, 1931 to Elmer and Sarah Tomlin Ellingson on a farm near Edgeley, North Dakota. Early in his childhood with the date kind of unknown, the family moved from the farm he was born on to the farm he grew up on and eventually ended up buying from his dad. He attended school at the country schoolhouse near the farm and then later went to Edgeley High School, staying with his sister Edith and her family during the weekdays while in school. On June 6, 1959, Ray was married to Dorothy, Dottie, Paulson, and they took over the farm to raise a family and continue the farming operation that his dad had started. Ray spent most of his life farming and ranching, enjoying the freedom and embracing the struggles that came along with it. The stories he had to share with his children, relatives, and friends were abundant. Ray had several nieces and nephews that he taught the trials of living the farm life, which he could have written a book about. Chapters about growing up, driving the team of horses during harvest, riding his horse to school, buying his first tractor with a cab probably would have been included as well. Ray, with a lot of help from Dottie, raised five boys on that farm. He helped teach them how to make the most of your life with the help of God, to work hard even if it was only for 25 cents an hour and be respectful to others. Even after retiring, he still stayed in touch with the farming, with the farming and ranching. He would sometimes be seen helping the land tenants with harvest or riding the four-wheeler to help move cows home from the pasture at Wyatt and Carey's place. 
It was his way of enjoying his life. Ray was preceded in death by his mother, Sarah, father, Elmer, wife, Dorothy, Dottie, sisters, Francis and Barbara, brother, Harold, brotherly cousin, Travis, and son, Kurt. He is survived by his sister, Edith Laney, four sons, Todd Ed of Edgeley, John of Fargo, Mark of Smith in Pennsylvania, and Wyatt of Edgeley. A daughter-in-law, Brenda, 12 grandchildren, including Chanel, Cody, Coulter, Coy, Kristen, Dustin, Katie, Logan, Miranda, Brooke, Weston, Ethan, and 12 great-grandchildren, Declan, Emery, Rowan, Gatlin, McLean, Gwendolyn, Ashton, Evelyn, Jack, Cora, Simon, and Carter. Ray's family would like to recognize his niece, also known as a daughter, Diane Ellingson Griman, for the special bond she had with him and all the help that she did for the family in his later years, and also Manor St. Joseph for his care the last bit of his time with us. In lieu of flowers, the family wishes that you would consider making a donation to our Redeemer's Lutheran Church or Manor St. Joseph. At this time, uh, you can remain seated and we'll sing together How Great Thou Art. Page 532. Great. 
This time I'm going to invite uh, Ray's son, John, to come up. Can everybody hear me okay? I know, Pastor Jordan, we're not allowed to have our phones on in church, but... I've got some stuff written down. I'll try to be faster than Jordan's two hours that he said it would be. But 92 years, I guess that's long enough. Unless, of course, you ask his sister, Edie. <laughs> I'd like us all to be thankful that this service is considered a celebration of life because all of you that really know Raymond, he probably wouldn't have shown up if we'd have said it was his funeral. <laughs> Throughout his years of his life, or the years of his life, Raymond held a lot of different titles. Not only was he a farmer and a rancher, but he was a son, he was a father, He was a friend, he was a neighbor, a good neighbor. Thought I had this a little better. A helping hand who would help anyone in need. But still, he was all the other different things too. A husband, a father, a grandfather, a great-grandfather, an uncle, and sometimes a great-uncle. I'm not sure how that works for sure. <laughs> and a cousin. If there are any others, please shout them out. The only thing that I would like to say is a really important title is he was a teacher. His teaching started early in his life as he taught Elmer that you could stay all night, stay out all night roller skating <laughs> and still get up and do all your work the next day. But I'm guessing that one backfired on him with raising five boys. <laughs> there are a lot of nieces and nephews in the church here today that probably learned a lot about the fun farm life as well as the work farm life. Putting up hay in the barn, doing the chores, all those kind of things. But you also probably learned how to ride horse, how to, I know this goes back to all of us kids, how to drive a car. He taught all of us boys how to drive a vehicle sitting in his lap, fully under control, driving down a ditch at 55 miles an hour with the sound of a screaming woman beside him. Uh, sorry, Mom, that one probably wasn't that called for. But most of the grandkids, and I know I have three of them in this room, He always used to call them the dumb city kids. <laughs> and they probably had a lot of those lessons as well. <laughs> All of this was fun and games. But Raymond, along with Dottie, 
also taught us boys and everybody else how to be responsible. Sorry. How to be responsible, respectful, forgiving, and most of all, how to live your life with faith. I know this is a day for Dad's celebration of life, but they both live by example. And when it comes to teaching all of us these life lessons, I spoke with my cousin Gordon earlier this week. And Gordon is also an, a pastor, and I believe Pastor Jordan probably would share this same belief, is that when dad passed, I cried for a little bit, and then I put it, a hand to the heaven and said, thank you. And Gordon told me that if you believe that, then your battle with his passing is basically over. So I would like each and every one of you to say again with me because I, uh, we all know that he's in the best place that he can be. Thank you. And Dad, please say hi to the rest of the family from us, and especially to Mom and Brother Kurt. Thank you. I want to take a moment not long to offer the opportunity that we there weren't able to do a prayer service last night and so if there's anybody else um, following what John had to say that just wants to share just three or four people perhaps for a few minutes uh, would like to share a story a thought um, a memory of any kind I just want to offer that opportunity to do that we've done this in the past and it's it's really worked well so don't be shy no Don't be sorry. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Vern Laning. Uh, I had the opportunity to work out at uh, Raymond's place on a few summers and uh, a lot of weekends and things. Uh, one of the things that was mentioned was his 25 cents a, an hour. That must have been during his generous days. <laughs> I remember picking rocks all day long for him, and I got 25 cents for that. <laughs> but I did have a lot of time. Raymond taught me a lot of things out there, and it's true. He called us a bunch of dumb city kids, but uh, he taught us about a, a bunch of dumb farm things to do too, like shoveling manure when it was raining so you couldn't go out in the field, and uh, stacking hay, and he was a perfectionist on making a nice round stack and I was the idiot that had to sit on top, moving all of that hay that he dumped in there. But uh, it was, Raymond taught an awful lot of people uh, and just very generous with his time. And I consider him, from a human standpoint, to be the second most influential male in my life. He was without equal, I think. My dad is first. but. Thank you, Pastor. I am uh, Verge Laning, the younger, better looking brother to the other one over here. Um, John, I wanted to say uh, I'm glad that you can walk back and forth because after I ran over your leg with the motorcycle that time, uh, yeah, it was a good thing. One thing my brother did not comment about was the chicken coop. Uh, Dottie and Raymond always seemed to raise chickens. And uh, for some reason, chickens, of course, they eat and 
they cause manure and that seems to accumulate in this boxy little eight by 10 foot uh, chicken coop. And uh, it's a natural thing that we have to clean up manures, cows, horses, everybody. Um, however, the thing with Raymond is that uh, you always had to clean out this chicken coop in the hottest, most humid day of August that you could find. Um, yeah, it was amazing how it always seemed to work out that way. But uh, other than that, yes, second most influential. Is there a couple more who'd like to share something? Um, my name's Harley Reed. I was a classmate of Todd's, and I never got a chance to uh, thank Raymond, and I'm sure we know why. Um, he kept repairing the uh, handbrake on uh, Todd's uh, Chevy Nova, and you never could figure out why we kept going through many brakes. Well, Back in the day, there wasn't any buildings on the industrial park. It was just a road. And if you pulled it just right, you could fishtail really well. And we had to spend a lot of nights doing that. So thank you, Raymond, for keeping to fix Todd's handbrake, because we did it for quite a, quite a number of times. So thank you. <laughs> Anyone else like to say one more thing?
All right, we got one more here. Sorry, I'll come back to you. Hi, I, I was Murray Men's neighbor for quite some time, and when he um, ended up living down with um, Diane Garman, um, <clears throat> she purchased the land so she could have the, the building that um, was lived in by... Um, Ju um, what's her name? What's um, Jeannie's mom's name? Francis Francis Singer. Francis Singer lived in the house, and they were going to sell it, and then they wanted to tear it down. And Raymond was still driving the ATV, and he was he, he just he was a worker. He he would load it up, and he knew how to load it. So the the um, the little, the boards, you know, the, the, the wall boards, whatever you want, I can't, I can't, but um, the mat boards, or whatever they're called. Um, he would load it up so, so much that, that he could start stacking it and it would be just piled up. And he would take so many trips, so many trips out to the dump, come back, and we'd fill them up. And it was just, he was ongoing. He did circles, and he did circles. And he would walk around with his, with his walker, he was doing so well, and and he just was a, he was a man of the hour. I would go, you know, are you behaving yourself? Because I got my eye on you. I'm watching you. <laughs> this is kind of funny. But he, he was a go-getter. He was a motivator and just a nice guy. So I wanted to thank, thank your family for letting him share in my life because it was great. I think everything I've heard is things that Raymond did here in North Dakota. Would that be mostly accurate? But I can tell you that his willingness to help extended well beyond that. He uh, came out to Idaho several times to visit my family and my dad and my mom. But when my shop burned down in northern Idaho in 2001, Raymond came out and spent a week and helped me rebuild another building and nailed on a whole bunch of joist hangers up 10 feet in the air, and he didn't stop until he got them all on, and there was a whole bunch of them. He definitely was not afraid to work, and he was sure willing to help. We thought he was a great guy. We really did. Thank you. I think we'll wrap that up there. I hope I didn't miss anybody. If there's somebody who wanted to say one thing last, I, I don't want to cut it off, but we can. Uh, uh, the other thing I would say is we'll have a graveside uh, ceremony just afterwards, and if you have a few minutes, that'll be outside um, with a little breeze, and you can off, uh, share something there as well. So. Thank you, though, to those who shared. I'm sure there's, for every one that shared, there's probably 10 more that could have. And uh, that's a testament to, to Raymond's life and to what he meant to so many people. So thank you for doing that. Okay, right now we're going to, if you uh, have a handout, it's the song, The Old Rugged Cross. We're going to sing that together. And I would usually have you stand, but I'll let you keep sitting because standing and sitting and standing and sitting, I think will generate more heat. So you can stay seated for The Old Rugged Cross.
someday for a crown. Rugged cross. I'm so sorry, after the first verse, I couldn't lead very well because I forgot to grab an insert myself. And I don't have the whole song memorized, but um, it was really good to listen to all of you sing. So thank you for joining in. All right, I just am going to share briefly today. I know it's warm, and so I've said that already, but uh, I'm going to share briefly. I first want to start, though, with some scriptures that the family had mentioned um, one of them partially is listed in the bulletin, but it comes from one of the wisdom, uh, the books, the wisdom books, I guess they call them, and this one is Ecclesiastes. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says this, There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every event under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. What profit is there to the worker from that which he toils? I have seen the task which God has given the sons of men with which to occupy themselves. He has made everything appropriate in his time and he has set eternity in man's heart. I know that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and to do good in one's lifetime. Moreover, that every man who eats and drinks sees good in all his labor. It is a gift of God. And then I want to share from 2 Timothy. Second, Second Timothy, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Paul writes, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. And the final scripture from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 22, 28 through 30. It says there, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of our Lord.
Well, I appreciate all the stories that I get to hear of Ray from years before. I didn't meet Ray until 2010 when I came to this church. And Ray and Dottie played such an important role in my early years here in being so welcoming and just in so many ways um, helping me feel at home here at Our Redeemers. And so I'm grateful for that. That's one thing that I am both to Dottie and to Ray that I am eternally grateful for. But as I was reading the obituary, and I don't know if you all noticed the, the picture in there. Where did I put that now? Of course. If you come to this church off enough, you know I spend half my time looking for the right sheet of paper. But you have it before you. It's a picture of Ray. And that smile on his face is an obituary in and of itself. Uh, I knew Ray to be a joyful person. And it was a joy that I think was the joy of the Lord. Ray was a joyful person despite a lot of struggle. Despite as what we read in scripture and what I just read, being heavy laden, being loaded upon heavily with the weight of life in different ways, especially later on as he cared for Dottie, visited her often as she herself was toward the end of her life. And the beauty of his care for her and his, his love for her in that marriage is also something that I just want to celebrate today and make mention of. Ray had a lot of, he showed up oftentimes at our house because he was a courier for the pharmacy. And when we lived in Cullum, he would always come by and the kids were so young at the time and he just, just his friendliness, it was almost like Santa Claus coming. And the kids, the kids just loved to say hi and he asked about them until just last month when I was with him last at the manor, he said, how's Rosa doing? Um, he cared so deeply about the people that he loved. And, and that's just the pastor's kids I can't imagine for the family. Um, so it will be a hole in the lives of the people who are left here. But nonetheless, it will be filled with such good memory. And so we celebrate that today, as you said, a celebration of life. I share these passages today in ways because, in so many ways, they're passages that reflect Ray. The family chose a, the a book of Ecclesiastes and the, and the reading from that. And as I read that, I read parts of it that weren't even in the bulletin, as you noticed. And in, didn't that just describe Ray? Uh, a person who, what the good in life to just work and to do good and to receive all the, all the fruit of your labor. It is a gift of God. And Ray did that. And Ray was neighborly. And he helped other people in that same way. But I also chose 2 Timothy. I, uh, I want to give credit, credit to Diane. Uh, she shared this story with me just last Thursday, I think, when I was here in town once. And she talked about the, the last day of Ray's life. And I thought it was just so fitting and I wanted everybody to hear it. Um, evidently, in the morning at the manor before breakfast, Ray would sit by the nurse's station and he would wait for the nurses to come by. And when they came by, he would have his walker ready and he would always ask them the same question. You want to race? And the truth is, on this last day of his life, in the last minutes of his life, Ray was sitting at the nurse's station and the nurses walked by. And he had his walker and he said, you want to race? And of course he did. He got up and he started racing them. 
and he was going to where he usually ate, and he didn't make it. He rested on a recliner, and that's where he passed. While racing. These words that I share from 2 Timothy, I'll read them again real quickly for us. Paul says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come, and I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. One thing that Ray cared most deeply about is his faith. And I don't always get emotional when I'm doing um, funerals, but I do so with Ray because he himself wore his emotions on his, on his sleeve. He wasn't afraid to cry. He wasn't afraid to be honest about how he felt. And one thing he cared so deeply about was his faith. And he cared deeply about his, his family. And he cared deeply about his grandchildren. And he prayed for them often. And when I would talk to him, a tear would always come to his eye. He is an example in this case of fighting the good fight. He is an example of staying the course, the race until quite literally in this sense, the final moment. And what a blessing to have that memory. And so his life ends recognizing the scripture, for all who are weary and have a heavy burden, who can't go on, I am here to give you an easy yoke and a lighter burden. Those are the words of Christ. And I believe that as Raymond lived his life with whatever burdens he had, from the beginning until the end, he gave those burdens over to Christ in such a beautiful way and in such an honest way. And in the end, he himself ran the race and finished the course. And so we celebrate today. We celebrate the love of God for Raymond, the salvation that he found in the person of Jesus Christ, in the one who calls all of us who are weary and heavy laden to come and find rest in him. And now Raymond rests eternally with his Father in heaven. And we praise God for that today. Amen. Okay, at this time, I will now actually have you stand. And we will not be sitting and standing. This will be the last standing. And we'll run through. If you would turn in a green hymnal, if you have one available. page 209, and we'll confess together our faith in the Apostles' Creed. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in the prayers below and respond with the words, Hear us, Lord. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Hear us, Lord. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and the gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Hear us, Lord. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Hear us, Lord. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Hear us, Lord. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Hear us, Lord. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Hear us, Lord. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection to life everlasting. Hear us, Lord. Grant us grace to entrust Raymond to your never-failing love, which sustained him in his life. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor you bear for your people. Hear us, Lord. God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Join with me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before I offer the commendation, I just want to make one quick announcement that there is going to be a time of refreshments and gathering at Hakuna Matata following the service. And the, the, the family would welcome everybody to come and join there. I'm also going to say a short prayer so that when you get there, you feel free to uh, begin to share in the food and what's provided. There is going to be a graveside ceremony immediately following the service, and all would be welcome, whoever wants to come for that. But if you are going straight to Kunwatata, please uh, join in. So, Lord God, we thank you today for the fellowship of believers, the fellowship of the family and friends of Raymond Ellingson. We pray that you would bless this time together. Bless us in bringing memories to light, in comforting one another, in finding joy in knowing Raymond's eternal life, that he is at home with you. But also, Lord, help us to comfort each other in our mourning and in our grief. We pray that this time would be special now and that you would bless the food that has been prepared for each person. Bless it to our bodies in Jesus' name. Amen. Now into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Raymond Ellingson. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. <laughs>